Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'm showing you how to make the Cuddly as a Cloud cardigan. I'm making the medium adult size, but the pattern includes child sizes and adult sizes up to 5X. This is one of my older patterns that did not include a video and the yarn is discontinued. So I wanted to update it for you, add some more sizes and do it in a yarn that you can easily get that is affordable. So I'm using Breva Bulky Weight Yarn. This is from We Crochet and I will have a link in the description box where to purchase it. It is 100% premium acrylic and it's a bulky weight number five. The crochet hook that I'm using for this pattern is an eight millimeter crochet hook and I'm using a furls Taurus hook for this pattern. So this pattern is a unique construction. It is worked from the side across. I make my sleeves separately and join them on, but the back and the front is all made in one piece. I'm working this pattern in half double crochet stitches in the front loop only, and it gives this nice ribbed texture. So we'll begin with a slip knot and put that on our hook. Now you can work foundation half double crochets or we can just chain and work in the back bump, which is what I'm gonna do just to make it a little bit more beginner friendly. But if you prefer the foundation half double crochet, do 138. If you prefer the chain method, we'll chain out 140. So you're chaining out such a long chain because this is the front as well as the back that we're working from the side across all at the same time. So I have just made a smaller swatch here to show you the stitch, but you'll be chaining out a total of 140 for the front and back panel. And this is for all the sizes for the adult patterns. If you wanna alter the length of your cardigan, this is where you would make adjustments, chain less for a shorter cardigan, chain more for a longer cardigan. And now what we will be doing is in the third chain from the hook, one, two, three, I want you to turn and work in the back bump. And work a half double crochet. So we're going to be working in those back bumps and it's going to make a nice edge. As you can see here, now if you've worked the foundation half double crochets, this will have been all done in one go and you should have 138. So we want 138 half double crochets as you work across. Okay, so once you get to the end, you can double check that you have 138. We'll chain one and turn. And now let's take a look at the stitch. So if you turn your work this way, you can see the top of our stitch right here. This is the back loop. This is the front loop. And you're also gonna see a loop right here, which is the third loop. Now this can sometimes throw people off and think this is the stitch and think that I'm working into the back loop, but I'm actually working into the front loop. So you want to make sure you turn to identify that this is the front loop of the half double crochet stitch. Okay. Cause that is the third loop. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to go through the front loop only and complete our half double crochet. So, and you can always tell, it's the front loop if you turn your work to the side to make sure that loop is the one we're going through. Okay, so if I'm working away and it looks to you like I'm working in the back loop, it's because that third loop pops up and can deceive you. So 
So this is how the cardigan is worked throughout. It's really very simple and straightforward and it will work up really quick. So now you wanna follow along with your pattern for how many rows you need to make. For the medium size, I'm working a total of 11 rows and we're just repeating row two working. This is a smaller swatch, you are working 138 stitches, working the front and back all at once from the side across. So I'm gonna complete working the 11 rows and then I'm gonna meet you up to show you the next steps. Okay, so once you've worked a total of 11 rows or as many rows needed for the size you're working on, we're going to chain one turn. We're gonna continue working along our row, but we're only going to work a total of 69 stitches. So we're still, find your front loop. So turn your stitch, find your front loop and work half double crochets in the front loop for a total of 69 stitches. Okay, so I've worked across 69 and I just counted to make sure that I had 69 stitches left unworked just so I know I'm on track as I continue this pattern. So what we'll do is chain one, turn, and we're going to continue working into the front loop half double crochets but now we'll be working the section along the back where our neck opening will be. And I want you to work back and forth now with 69 stitches and we'll be working to a total of 19 rows. So 11 for the front half and then we'll have an additional Eight rows worked at the 69 stitch mark. So 11 plus eight will be a total of 19 rows in total. But for the next section, the back section where we have this neck opening will be a total of eight rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those rows worked up. So as we work from the side across, we'll work this section of eight rows and then we're going to need to chain to make our front panel for our other side. So the back is all worked, the back and the fronts are all worked together. The back is all worked together here and then we'll chain out and start doing the exact same thing. So we'll then need to have 11 rows for the other side of the cardigan. Okay, so I worked over my additional eight rows. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. And then I've already started working back along here. So I didn't have to do that with you. But when you get back along, so this is the 20th row that I'm on now, we're now going to chain out so that we have our other front. So I'm going to chain out a total of 70. Okay, so now once you've reached 70, we're going to work back in the second chain from the hook, but I'm gonna turn and go into the back bump and I'm gonna work a half double crochet and in the back bumps across. So we're going to have 69. I just worked back in the second chain from the hook. So I chained it 70, worked back in the second chain so that I have 69. And I'm just gonna work all the way now along my chain and then once I get to the body I'll just continue working. Okay so once you get here we're going to get go 
work back into the front loop again. So make sure you look at your stitch. Here's the front loop. And we're gonna work across. So now what we wanna do is complete the same number of rows we did for the other side. So here's our first row. If you look at this panel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, you wanna have 11 rows now on this side. So I'm gonna continue working off camera. You're just gonna, again, keep working half double crochets in the front loop only till you have a total of 11 for this front side. Okay, so I've completed the other side. Down here, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I've worked 11 rows. We have 11 rows on this front panel as well. And the total of our back is 31 rows. So I've finished off down here at the back of the cardigan. And at this point, you can fasten off with a long tail. And always use the tail for seaming. our collar will be worked around the inside of our panels. So I'm going to join on. So this, if this was on me, this would be my front right panel. And I want a, a round, going around our row of single crochet for the edging to attach the collar. So I'm going to join on and I'm going to work single crochets because it's worked from the side across we do have a nice edge here but when we get to the collar we don't have stitches to work into so I just want to go around just to make it easy when we're doing our collar So I've worked up 68, 69, and then I'm gonna work across as evenly as I can. Just evenly space out these stitches as you work across. So I worked around 13 stitches across the neck. It's okay if you don't have exactly the same, you just want it to look nice and smooth as you've worked across. And then work down 79 stitches on this side. You just want to make sure that both sides have the same amount of stitches which because we're working into a stitch it makes it a little easier you can see how that looks there so I'm going to continue working this down and I'll be fastening off at the end okay so once I finished here I'm just going to fasten off I am NOT going to join as you go my collar here because I don't like how it looks. I'd rather join it as I go from the other side. So originally when I did this pattern, I had you work the collar separately and then join it, but I'm just going to save on that step of seaming and just go ahead and make the collar a join as you go collar. It just saves us sewing and I'm happy to skip out on any sewing. 
So I'm going back over to the front right panel and I'm going to join down into the first stitch. And I am going to chain out a total of 27. And then in the second chain from the hook, work a single crochet. So work single crochets across. So we should have a total of 26. It's always a good idea to count as you go. And then we'll slip stitch. Once we've worked all the way across, we'll slip stitch into the next two stitches. This is going to join it as we go. Now we'll turn, making sure to skip one, two slip stitches, and then we're gonna work in the front loop only single crochets. And if you turn your stitch here, you can see this is the front loop. And this is what we'll be doing now. We're gonna just work back and forth single crochets in the front loop only. And we'll be slip stitching to our stitches as we go. So as you can see, this just saves us having to seam the collar. It's a very wide, a very wide collar if you prefer it not quite so big, you can always reduce reduce these the number of that starting chain, but it's gonna fold over and it's just gonna be a really nice oversized collar, which I think looks really cool. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so once you get to the top, we'll chain one and turn. and we'll work in the front loop only single crochets. Now this is gonna take some time because we have to work around the entire piece. So we have to do our right panel, our neck, and then down the left panel. So this is a time consuming part but it's also really mindless. You can just easily work this away without having to think too much. So it is a nice project just to work on in the evening when you're watching TV. And certainly the bulky yarn does help it go quicker than if you were using a lightweight yarn. Okay, so I am going to finish coming down and then I'll just slip stitch again with you one more time. Okay, so you get down to the base. You can see we're attached here and then these are the next two stitches. So we slip stitch into the next two. We turn, we skip over the slip stitches. So one, two, and then here's our first stitch. And you should be working 26 stitches in the front loop only unless you decide, have decided to shorten up the collar. But I'm gonna continue this now, working it up off camera. I'm gonna meet you back up when I have it complete. But next up, I'm gonna show you how you can work the sleeves. So I've already worked mine up, but it's really quick and easy as well. So I'll show you how to get going with one. Okay, so here is one of my sleeves. It's also worked from the side across. 
half double crochets in the front loop only and then we I've worked single crochets in the front loop only for the cuff section now if you wanted this even tighter the back loop would kind of pull it in a little bit more or you could even slip stitch if you wanted it tighter but this is sort of kind of sticks with the front loop um, theme and I think it looks really nice so just if you want a tighter cuff you might want to change that but I'm pretty happy with how this one's turned out so I'm just going to give this sleeve a measure for you so my sleeve is about 19 inches so if you want to cha change the length of the sleeve make sure you alter the length of your chain based on however many inches that you want. If you need to add more chains or less chains based on how long you would like the sleeve. So for the sleeve, we're going to chain out a total of 49. So I'll work those chains off camera and then I'll meet you back up. So once you've worked your 10 single crochet, we're then gonna work 38 half double crochet across. Or however many stitches that you have remaining for your sleeve length. Okay, so once you've worked all the way, we're gonna chain one, and now we're going to start working into those front loops. So again, always make sure you turn to see that stitch. And we're gonna work across now 38 half double crochets in the front loop only. And when you get to the final 10, we'll work single crochets in the front loop only for the cuff. Okay, so once you get down to, to your 10 final stitches, we'll work those single crochets into the front loops. You should have 10 stitches in the front loop. Chain one and turn. We'll work across 10 single crochet in the front loop only. Three, four, and then start working our half double crochets in the front loop all the way across. Okay, and then we're repeating row two and three to make our sleeve. And for our medium sleeve, I'm working a total of 19 rows, but you can mix and match your sleeves. So just go to the schematic check out the sizes of the sleeve if you want a tighter sleeve if you want a bigger sleeve i know i get asked this sometimes can you put a bigger sleeve onto the cardigan if you want and yes you can i don't have any shaping with the side of this cardigan so we're not concerned about fitting in a sleeve so you can put whatever size if you need a couple extra rows do a couple extra rows it's not a big deal or do less if you want a more tight fitting sleeve. So now I've already worked at my sleeves, so I have both of them already complete and they're super quick and easy to make. So the next step, once I finish, the collar will be to sew on the sleeves. Okay, so I have completed working my collar. I've worked all the way down. I slip stitched in the final stitch and I have just left fastening off right here. 
So once you have the collar complete, what we can do is move on to attaching the sleeves. So I have my right side facing and I have added some stitch markers to the center. So let me just move the cardigan and lay it flat. So this is the right side and I've counted 69 stitches from both sides. So basically in the center of where these stitches meet is our center and that just helps when we're attaching the sleeve to make sure we are adding it in the right spot. So I'm just going to grab my sleeve here and you want to find the side of the sleeve that you have the nice edges. Okay, so this is going to be the right side. So this is my right side, this is my right side, and then what you're going to do is put your right sides facing for when you sew. So now for the size I'm working on, I have 19 rows. So my 10th row will be the center. So I know I need to line up this row with my two stitch markers and then you know that you are sewing it on evenly. Now I like to give it a stretch out for when I'm sewing, just so you don't get that bunch um, sleeve look. So make sure you give it a nice tug. And what you can even do is add You can clip it or you can add um, just your markers to kind of hold it in place for when you start sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a piece of yarn and then I'm just going to sew my sleeve to the side of the cardigan. Okay, so you wanna take your yarn needle for bulky yarn. And I'm going to knot that to get it started. Make sure you leave a tail for weaving. And you wanna make sure that you pull, pull it as you are going to start sewing now. Just so it's stretched out, you don't want that sleeve to be too tight. So I'm just going through the stitch and then just going through the side of the sleeve. And you're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. I'm just removing stitch markers here now as I go. Coming up to the center. And again, you wanna make sure that you give this a tug before you start doing this section. And just continue sewing this all the way across and then repeat for the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side. I don't suggest weaving in any tails. Leave your tails, and then if you need to make an adjustment, it's really easy to pull off a sleeve because if you find the sleeve is maybe too tight or you didn't stretch it out enough, you're not liking how it looks, if you don't weave in that tail, you can always pull off the sleeve and make any changes that you need to. It would be easy just to even add a row or two to the sleeve if you needed to. But 
after going to all this work, you want to make sure that you have the right fit and that your sleeve looks well when it's sewn on. So as I'm finishing, I am just going to give it a knot and then that's going to help secure, but still easy to pull out if we need to make any changes. Okay, so as you can see, it looks like I missed a little section here, so I can go back and fix that. But the rest of it is looking good. And this is probably just where I grabbed through. I've left the hole from the stitch, which I don't like how that looks. So it's really easy just to go and fix that up with my tail. Or you'll have to go and pull it back if you don't have a tail that you can work with. Okay, so that looks better. Okay, so I've attached my second sleeve and now what I'm gonna do is, I know this is still my right side, so I'm going to flip so that my right sides are facing because when I seam the sides and the sleeves of the cardigan, I want, again, to be seaming it so that my right sides are facing. So when I flip my cardigan right side, the seam is to the inside. And I've left some tails attached. So I have some long tails to work from. And what's nice about a side across cardigan is that we have these stitches to work from. So you can do this two ways. You could slip stitch your seam together, or we can continue to do our whip stitch, but it does make it super easy because we have a stitch on each side. So I have a long tail here. So if you prefer Actually, just use whatever your preferred seaming method is. You could even do the mattress stitch for this and it would work really well. If you do the mattress stitch, you're going to have your right sides out and looking at your seam. This way, you could slip stitch and you can play around and look at both ways of seaming or the different ways of seaming and see what you prefer. I'm happy with just doing a whip stitch. So what you're going to do is just go through this stitch and find your first stitch on this side and go through. I do like to go through that first stitch twice, but just again, whatever your preferred seaming method, method is. So what you can do is you can work a few stitches. If you're trying different methods, you can try a few different stitches. Just go up a little bit and then check to the right side and see how you like it. What I like about it is a whip stitch. I don't like the ridging. I like it to lay flat. So I'm really happy with just this seam. And as you can see, it looks really good on this side too. So. But again, I know that some of you prefer different methods, so go ahead and use what you like. So I also left a long tail with my sleeve, so I may just have enough to get up to my underarm. So what I may do is seam it up to the underarm and then use my tail here to seam this up, depending on how I'm doing for my length. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and do that off camera and I'm going to do that to both sides. Okay, so I also have the option to add pockets to the cardigan. So here's one that I've made already. It again is super simple and quick to make. We're working single crochets in the front loop only for this pocket. So for the pocket, we're going to chain a total of 17.
and then we'll work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now you can do the back bump, which I think I'm gonna do instead. So we'll do the back bumps. So we're working across a total of 16 single crochet. We'll chain one and then the pocket is going to be worked single crochets in the front loop only. So again, this is just repetitive from work I've already shown you. So you're just gonna work single crochets in the front loop only and our pocket is going to be a total of 11 rows. So once you have 11 rows, all we're going to do is edge around the pocket. So we're just gonna work now single crochets down the side. And in our corner, so the last stitch, we're going to add three just so we have a nice corner. And then we'll work across the bottom and just evenly, try to evenly space your stitches. to just take a look to make sure I'm not putting too many. Okay, and then in this corner, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put three and then work in each stitch up the side. And then I'm going to fasten off with a long tail because we'll use that to sew the pocket to the cardigan. So feel free to change the sizing if needed, depending on the size of the cardigan you're working on. So the next step will be to sew these to our front panels. Okay, so I finished all of my seaming and it really actually worked quite well. It looks really good on the join. I have woven all my tails in now because I tried it on and I like the fit and everything looks good. So the only thing I'm going to suggest, I haven't blocked mine, but I will do some light steam blocking just to kind of help out the, the curving. You may, if you don't have a steamer, you may want to block the collar just so it lays nicely, but I do suggest perching a steamer if you plan on making lots of garments because it does really help finish your projects well. What you need to be careful with steam and acrylic yarn is that you don't melt it. So make sure that you're only lightly steaming this. You don't wanna melt those stitches. So just don't put the steamer too close to the yarn. But you could block this before you seamed it. I just find um, with this bulky yarn and stuff, I just don't feel it's as necessary and we're not stretching it out to a much bigger measurement. So I didn't worry. But of course, you could block it out to measurements if you want that nice pressed finish look. So now what we're going to do is seam on the pockets, which is really quick and easy to do. You just want to get the side and just find a spot that's nice and easy to seam it to. And I'm just going to leave maybe about an inch from the bottom. Now I'm just gonna work through the back loop of the stitch that I have here. But for that first one, I'll make sure I go through a bit more of my work just to make it a little more secure. But then as I work, I'm just going to go through, I'm pulling up a loop from the cardigan and going through the back loop of the pocket. And I'm just going to sew it like this all the way around. Okay, so I've worked it all the way around and now I'm just going to weave in my tail and go ahead and do the pocket on the other side in the same position. 
So this is how it's looking. And I just used this ridge here to help sew this side of the pocket. So with the ridges, it just made it really easy to sew the pocket between those so I could use the loops to sew it on and that just made things a bit easier. So I'm just working on this pocket and I'm just showing you how it's easy to pick up this loop and then just go through the back loop and just make sewing on this pocket so easy. And it doesn't even hurt if you don't get every single stitch as you go. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish that off now. Okay, so one last thing you can do, this is just optional, of course, is adding a personalized tag. So these tags are from brickbubble.ca. She custom did these for me and they're faux leather. And you can order the leather rivets from Amazon. You can also get tags that are that you're able to sew on and there's different sizes. This is the 0.75 by I think 2.25 inches. And you can hammer these together just so that it doesn't come apart. So that's just a nice little touch if you wanna add a personalized touch to, to your cardigan. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. You'll find all the details that you need in the description box below. So the yarn materials, the links to the pattern and the link to the blog post. This pattern does come in child sizes as well as adult sizes. So you can go check that out and make this cardigan for um, yourself and your child. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.